Hey y'all, I'm Elisa, the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com and today I have a Traveler's Notebook process video for you. I am working in my deconstructed Traveler's Notebook for the summer and today I have a couple of pictures to document from a recent trip that my sister and her family did to come visit us here in Virginia. So I have some scraps pulled out because it's my new mission in life to try to use all of the scraps. So I have those pulled out and then I also grabbed my some days uh, ephemera. This is one of my very favorite uh, crafting lines and so I'm excited to try to use some of these ephemera pieces. It should be a pretty simple process. That is what I love about Traveler's Notebooks. So I will put you all on fast forward. I'll link everything that I end up using down below. Otherwise, let's go. One thing I love about my deconstructed Traveler's Notebook is that you have the convenience of the size of a Traveler's Notebook without the stress of having to work within a bulky Traveler's Notebook because as you start to work in those, they can tend to come apart. Uh, they can tend to be difficult to work in just because they do get bulky. So I like being able to take the pages out, work on it on a flat surface, and then put them back in. So what I'm doing is I really had no plan for the color scheme for this page. So I started looking through the ephemera pieces and picking out ones that were jumping out at me and I noticed quickly that kind of red and pink were what was jumping out. So then I decided to go with that scheme at the beginning. Plus I'm pulling out all of these florals just because I think they are fun. So I'm looking at what pieces kind of fall within that red and pink and which ones might be applicable to the two pictures that I'm wanting to document. All right, so I'm going to cut down this picture of my sister and brother-in-law to put on this card. And you guys, I should have just pulled out the paper cutter at the beginning because I trim and I trim and then it gets more crooked and then I need it smaller and it was just a little bit of a mess. I don't like pulling out my paper cutter for just a small picture. I just want to be able to trim it. I'm not a big perfectionist as far as if things are straight or not, but it took me a few tries in all honesty to get this one correct. I'm going to start playing with the placement of things on the page and I do have it as one of my goals. I recently cleaned out my craft room and I have a lot of paper. I have a ton of uh, beautiful scrapbook paper, not as many as other people have for sure, but I have a lot for me and I want to go through and use some of my scraps. So I'm trying to be really intentional, especially in pro projects like a traveler's notebook where it's really easy to utilize different scraps. I'm trying to be really intentional about pulling scraps and using scraps in these types of projects. So that's why I pulled out this particular uh, envelope full of all kinds of scraps from the hip kit club. I do keep my club scraps together. So I have a scrap envelope full of Felicity Jane scraps, a scrap envelope full of hip kit club and paper person as well. Just because I know that some of those products are going to work really well with each other. I don't necessarily want to divide them all out by color, which is how I have the rest of my kind of more generic scraps organized. So I had started with the red and pink as kind of my main color scheme and then I knew I wanted to bring in some of the florals and those particular florals have a lot of lemons with them. So I decided I would go ahead and pull in a lemon color or a yellow color by adding a little bit of matting behind each of my photos. It also is a repeated pattern on both pages, uh, which I like. It helps bring a cohesive feel. Another fun thing that brings a cohesive feel is when you have one piece of paper that spans both of your layouts. And I love putting it kind of on an angle. I put both pages next to each other, add the adhesive, place it down, and then you just have to cut down the middle where the two pages are already cut apart. And it's just a really neat look. I actually really enjoy doing this in planner spreads and in traveler's notebook spreads because you're bringing two sides together. These are gonna be separated by a binder ring, so there will be distance between the two pages. It's not like they will be butted up next to each other, but I like that you're gonna have this kind of continuous pattern um, that connects the two different pages together. Okay, at this point, it's time to start putting down some other pieces on the page. I'm kind of playing with some of them being straight and some of them being wonky. Of course, I started with that kind of wonky piece that is spanning both sides of the layout. And then I'm going to go back and forth between the straight journaling card up at the top and then a wonky picture. And then I'll add a straight 
journaling card at the bottom that will also still go slightly off the page. I can trim those. I really like having elements that hang off of the page that you trim off. I think it adds a really interesting look and it's one of the parts of my style that um, I really honed in on I feel like and I feel like that's something that I um, want to include on a regular basis. So now I have these elements over here. This one will be straight. These all end up kind of being straight because I have such a severe um, angle with the kind of paint palette color swatch looking piece um, over on the side. So adding in the picture of my brother in law and sister and then another little place to journal. For this page I was really conscious to make room for journaling for adding little notes and I'm also going to continue with my theme of team no white space because I am just going to cover up. I didn't use a scrapbook paper on the back of this. I'm just going to cover up all of the white space with anything I can find. So I love these florals that come with the Some Days kit. I will link this kit below if you haven't seen this set. I think it's from Pink Fresh Studios. I'll link it below. It is so cute. It came out in 2020 and it is just one of my favorite sets ever. So I'm just going to pick a bunch of the florals. I'm mixing in some lemons to bring in that yellow and I'll use that to kind of cover up a lot of the white space that's left on the page. So there was no need for a full on piece of patterned paper. I am going to cover it up on my own and get to incorporate all of these gorgeous pieces onto my spread. I found that this floral piece that is another awesome candidate for connecting my two pages, which is what I'm going to do, put them right next to each other, see where it will kind of land and then cut off right here and I'll be able to add it on adding a little bit of extra adhesive, adding it onto the other side of the page. And then I love this little tab. Sometimes I forget to use tabs because I'm so used to using them on the tops of my pages in Bible journaling. I forget that I can pull them in in other parts of the page. And so this week I've done that actually with several different projects, but I remembered to find this um, tab. It says Wednesday and I can add it in and give my picture a little bit more context. Um, while also using just a fun shaped element. You can see that when I have ephemera pieces that I hang off of the page and then cut down, I like to use the cut down piece. So for instance, I cut that lemon piece off and I will use that over on the opposite side of the spread, generally turned in a different direction. I don't want it to be too matchy matchy, but that way you're still getting the most out of your paper pieces. It doesn't feel like you're wasting any of your ephemera because I love ephemera and so I never ever want to waste any of it. And again, it brings together the two sides of the spread because you're going to have this repeated element. Um, one of my big hints though, especially with florals, is make sure you continue turning the piece because you don't want it to look like it's this continuous pattern. It's just bringing hints of both sides um, back together. I am almost done. I have the little white space up top, so I'll pick out the last few florals to bring up there. I definitely could have left that white space alone, um, but there was no white space on the left side. So in that case, I kind of felt like it was unbalanced. So I'm just going to go for it and fill my spreads. I like them looking full, abundant, overflowing, any of those words. That's kind of the style that I like to use on a lot of my projects and especially on my traveler's notebook spreads. I like tons of color um, because I feel like it helps to tell the full story of the picture. The last element before journaling is going to be these chipboard circles. I am making a conscious effort to use my chipboard pieces a little bit more so I pulled out this little bin of chipboard circles and found a couple that work with the color scheme and where the words work. So I have yes 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 and love over on the right side and then I'll just take my spread off camera add in the journaling and this one will be pretty much done. Oops, you know what? I forgot. There are some puppy stickers. So I used these puppy stickers from Pink Fresh Studio to add the word cousins and then the Dales over on the right side and then the journaling and then the whole traveler's notebook spread is done quick and easy. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. I have linked all of the supplies that I could find down below. Heads up, some of those will be affiliate links. Thank you in advance for shopping those links. It does not cost you any more, but it does go a long way to supporting this channel. 
And speaking of supporting this channel, a huge shout out to my scrappy YouTube members. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for your support. If you're interested in finding out more about scrappy YouTube membership, make sure to click the join button or the link in the description box below. All right. I hope that you have a fabulous day and as always, keep it creative.